And this is what happened this week. In a week where we saw some remarkable anatomically and politically correct costume design... You can feel the rage. Women have had enough. And we learned about the birds and the bees. An Australian boutique blend of honey believed to have aphrodisiac qualities is much in demand in the Middle East. And I had no idea, really, that I had a paddock full of Viagra. I can't wait for the new reality show, Farmer Should Seek Medical Attention If Effects Last More Than Four Hours. But it all started on Thursday, and with JobKeeper about to wind up, the government wanted some industries to have a soft landing. And as usual, when faced with a crisis, the Prime Minister could be spotted at an airport waving around a boarding pass. Travel is back, baby, with hundreds of thousands of airline tickets to be sold at half price. It's part of the federal government's latest bid to help the tourism industry survive the pandemic. Taxpayers will fund half the price of 800,000 tickets to destinations across Australia, including the Gold Coast, Sun Sunshine Coast, Marimbula in New South Wales, Avalon in Victoria. Yes, get in quick and you too can see each state's second and third favourite airports as part of our due to turbulence your flight has been diverted to promotion. One place everyone will want to go is Tasmania after a stunning report from a current affair that asked the tough questions, then in a novel journalistic technique, answered them immediately. Is it or isn't it? Are these exclusive shots of the supposedly extinct Thylacine or Tasmanian tiger? Yes. Or is it vision of a wallaby or other animal? No. Or is the notion of the Tasmanian tiger still existing a myth? Definitely not. Incredible stuff. Is this the scoop of the year? Yes. That was rhetorical. Neil Waters, president of Australia's Thylacine Awareness Society, which I was not aware of, but always believed was out there somewhere. From the jump, it was clear that these men were expert hunters. Neil, where are you? Just over here, mate. I love getting over a log, let alone fighting a Tasmanian tiger. How does one catch a thylacine? Now, the reason why I'm using a bacon hock is because all the old bushies reckon tigers love pork. Or maybe that's what killed them. You know, all the sodium. On Friday, we learned that getting jabbed might have to wait. Some Australians may have to wait until next year to be fully vaccinated for COVID-19, with the immunisation program now expected to extend well beyond the government's October target. But so far, just 125,000 people have been vaccinated, well below the 4 million initially projected. On the downside, 125,000 is pathetically short of 4 million, but on the upside, those 125,000 people can now all attend a funeral together. But with Health Minister Greg Hunt in hospital, Acting Health Minister Scott Morrison said his hope and expectation was that the October deadline would be met. Then, a day later... Prime Minister, yesterday uh, you said everyone would be vaccinated by October. And you said that on television. Uh, today, you're now saying no, no, that they're you're not? You're misunderstanding me. The first dose will be administered by the end of October. That's what I meant. Yeah, it's like jazz. You have to listen out for the doses you're not getting. Dig? And while we are lagging far behind the rest of the world's vaccine rollout, the good news is that Australia has once again managed to flatten that curve. To Saturday, as the fallout continued from Meghan versus the Royals, or as I call it, the state of origin for new idea readers, the focus was still on allegations of racist conversations from the Royals about baby Archie's skin tone. What? Yeah, we talked about it last week, Oprah. I mean, keep up. This week, the revelation turned into the world's most salacious game of guess whom. People are trying to guess who it was. So I don't know who it was. Who was it? Was it Prince William? Was it Prince Charles? Couldn't be the Prince Charles that I know that posted some photos the day after the interview of him just popping into his old mates at a black majority church he last visited in 2007, which meant suspicion turned to the heir to the heir to the throne, Prince Wilhelm. Uh, Have you spoken to your brother since the interview? <laughs> No, I haven't spoken to you yet, but I will do. And, and can you just let me know, is the, the royal family a racist family, sir? Oh, good question. If he says yes, you've got him. Can you just let me know, is the, the royal family a racist family, sir? No, we're very much not a racist family. Oh, so close. Yes, Prince William, seen here being carried to the very much not a racist family reunion, made absolutely clear they were not racist. Hell, some of his best colonies are black. 
On Sunday, we awoke to the aftermath of the WA election, where Premier Mark McGowan, depicted here as a permanent mistake, took on opposition leader Zach Kirkup, who promised, if elected, to reveal all 11 secret herbs and spices. Zach already conceded the race two weeks early, so, like a condemned man, he was forced to count down the days until his demise, tweeting, three days until polling day, two days until polling day, one days until polling day. And as we all settled in for the nail-biting... What? It's all over already. Polls only closed like less than an hour ago. At this stage, I'm prepared to call the election. We have 0.7% vote counted. We can safely say the McGowan government has been returned to office. All right, Anthony Green, with 1% of the vote counted, you've called the election at 6.43 p.m. Hard to tell if the election was a landslide or Anthony just had dinner reservations. Ultimately, Labor swept to victory in what papers dubbed the biggest win ever, making it a harsh night for the biggest loser ever. This is a very difficult loss. While newly minted God Emperor McGowan preached unity. Can I also acknowledge West Australians who didn't vote for us? And I promise to work for everyone across Western Australia. I'm sure that's a huge relief for both Liberal voters. Next, Monday. The Ides of March. As the March for Justice kicked off in major cities across the country, the government's cheap flights plan was already working as thousands of daughters, also known as people, flocked from all over the country to Canberra. But strangely, everyone inside Parliament House was suddenly busy. You've been criticised for saying you're too busy to attend. Um, why? Uh, why are you well, so, never said so I was too busy to attend. I've just, got a, I've just got a full book of appointments and they've been uh, uh, long-standing appointments and I believe if you make appointments then you should be keeping those appointments. It's true. He even kept his appointment to gab with Koshy and even Sam Armitage got out of that one. Minister for Women Maurice Payne also declined to meet with the rally organisers, telling them to take their petition and email or post it. Weird, I thought the government said it didn't read letters women posted to them. Huh. And the Prime Minister also clicked not attending. He'd made it clear that he doesn't plan on going out the front of Parliament House and hearing from women himself. Scott Morrison says he won't attend the rally. Um, because as Prime Minister, when you're in Canberra, it, it's a very busy day. Yeah, poor bloke, he is busy. I mean, he's flat out doing his job and Linda Reynolds' job and Christian Porter's job for some reason or other. The Labor Party was also having a busy day. Labor faces its own allegations of mistreatment about women, which surfaced through a private Facebook group for current and former staffers. Opposition leader Anthony Albanese bravely hid behind a baby before addressing the claims. And one of the things that I've said, though, is that harassment and sexist behaviour and, indeed, patriarchy doesn't exist. A disgusting statement from the... Op oh. No, sorry, he's, he's not done. It doesn't exist uh, just on one side of politics. It exists throughout society. No, oh, good. Well, not good, obviously, but good. Someone who did find time to appear at the rally was the woman at the centre of the allegations that started this movement, Brittany Higgins. The woman whose pain and courage lit a fire in millions. We are all here today, not because we want to be here, but because we have to be here. We are here because it's unfathomable that we are still having to fight this same stale, tired fight. Women and men travelling from around the country to be a part of history. For the thousands of faces in the crowd, this was the one people most wanted to see. That's bloody enormous. Safely hidden from his own citizens, the real Scott Morrison stood up in Parliament to say, nice protest you got there, shame if anything happened to it. This is a vibrant Liberal democracy, Mr Speaker. Not far from here, such marches, even now, are being met with bullets. But not here in this country, Mr Speaker. Not here in this country. Yes, women are so lucky they get to protest rampant sexual violence without getting shot at. I would say count your lucky stars, but, you know, it's, it's not really safe to be out at night. For a PR PM, this PM is terrible at PR. And just on that level, he has missed an opportunity. John Howard famously donned a bulletproof vest to address angry gun owners in what became a defining moment of his prime ministership. But by hiding in Parliament, Scott Morrison has shown the only thing he's more scared of than being met with bullets 
is listening to women. But there's a bit of that going around Canberra. The power, the anger, the feeling that people's voices are not being heard, that's what the Prime Minister is not acknowledging. The same Prime I Minister entirely... that opened his door... Are you door going to talk over me on this? Are you really going to talk over me on this Prime issue? The Prime Minister that invited those representatives... Ben, we're office. talking about respect for highest women in this workplace. Are you going to talk over me? The land. I think we can have you a keep respectful going, conversation. Sure seems like it. On Tuesday, Pope Francis continued to dodge questions about why God let this whole pandemic thing happen and instead tried to distract the media with a new announcement. Pope Francis has ruled out blessing same-sex unions in a devastating blow to gay Catholics. In a two-page statement published in seven languages, the Vatican referred to the unions as a choice. The Holy See claiming God, quote, does not and cannot bless sin. Uh, I thought God could do anything. I mean, I don't mean to pope explain your job to you, but God can do what God wants, including blessing Auntie Rhonda and her very good friend. Papa Frankie is just saying that the blanket rule against gay marriage can't have exceptions, which makes sense. Hypocrisy has no place in the Catholic Church. But it does make this little investment very surprising. Now, Alton took to his social media, obviously very, very unhappy about this, and he's pointed out to us that the Catholic Church actually were investors in the movie Rocket Man. Surprising, but it does explain the changes to the song Don't Let the Father, Son or Holy Ghost Go Down On Me. To Wednesday, the government was finally ready to ramp up the vaccine rollout. Six million Australians can now book their shot. Right as everyone else was saying, stop the rollout. Germany, France, Spain and Italy all announcing a total pause on AstraZeneca vaccinations. Joining Ireland, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Iceland and Bulgaria. These countries are waiting on the results of an investigation into blood clots in 37 of the 17 million people vaccinated, a ratio so low I started to wonder if the vaccine cures blood clots, particularly as the agency conducting the investigation said... There is no indication that vaccination has caused these conditions. Faced with a complex medical crisis, the doctors at the Today Show decided to apply some scientific rigour. And thousands of you have been voting in an exclusive Today Show poll and the results will be a big concern for the government. 5,400 of you say, no, you would not currently take the AstraZeneca jab, compared to just 2,200 who say they would. Yes, the government will be paying close attention to a Today Show Facebook poll where thumbs up means yes and heart icon somehow means no, presumably because the heart is chock-a-block with clot. If only there was some way to cover this story with even less scientific credibility. Craig Kelly, good morning to you. Here we go. You're not a scientist. Um, uh, the European Medicines Agency is full of scientists. They're the peak body in Europe. They're saying, don't stop it. Well, Koshi, there certainly are some mixed opinion uh, on this. No, no, no. Regulators, no, 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 in, as you said... Yeah, you're sort of undermining the confidence by, by well, going I, I on about this. I would disagree. And, uh, I would disagree 100%. All right. Facts are facts. Craig uh, Kelly, appreciate it. Sadly, there's no cure for that massive clot. 